All right. Uh, welcome everybody. Thank you so much. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't have any technical uh, technical issues with audio and everything when we first got started with our session zero. Uh, welcome uh, to uh, Fallout, the role playing game, Winter of Adam. I know that everyone's been really excited to um, get their hands on this new book that is coming out this week. And during this stream, during, ses during session zero, we will be taking a look at some of the new options, the new origins that you can um, choose to play in our wonderful setting for the Fallout role-playing game, uh, like Protectron, uh, Protectron Synths, uh, Gen 3 Synths, and um, Children of Adam. So those are some things that are new to the Fallout world uh, with Modiphius. So. Uh, my name is April Hill. Uh, I will be the overseer for this campaign. I'm also the community manager here at Modifius Entertainment. So uh, yeah, if you're on our Discord or on the socials and you're wanting to chat to somebody, it's me. It's me behind the screen. Please be nice and don't yell at me. I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Brianna, Brianna knows all about that uh, <laughs> with community management and stuff. It's, it's, we don't like when people yell at us. Please don't do that. Um, but you can find me personally at stiletto underscore assassin on Instagram and stiletto DM on Twitter. And um, before we jump into tonight's session zero that we've got here using uh, the wonderful Roll20 VTT, uh, I want to meet some of our wonderful players. So we'll start tonight with Andrew. Please oh, let us know where we can find you and all the things. Don't tell us about your character, though. No, no, no worries. No, no, no spoilers. Just hello, everyone. I'm Andrew J. Landy. I'm a host. I'm a actor, voice actor, uh, things like that. Uh, some of the things I've done, I was actually the voice of Dante Mendoza in Vampire and the Masquerade Port Saga. If you are into scripted audio dramas, so that's definitely a thing. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, at Andrew J. Landy. Uh, love to be here. I'm like, super excited. I haven't really pl fully played through Fallout as a campaign, so I'm excited to be with all these lovely people, and of course you, the wonderful viewers and listeners and lurkers. All, all of you are just beautiful. Yeah. We're so glad that you're here like to play more Fallout with us. Um, all right, next we will uh, uh, jump over to Nai. What, what do you prefer we call you? I don't know, you mean Nye, Nye Wall? <laughs> okay, Nye. okay, just want to make Either sure. Either way works, yeah, okay. absolutely. I, was like, I feel like I like, just want to call you Nye, but Nye Wall, okay. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's it right there. I am Nye Wall. Uh, you can find me over at YouTube. Uh, I don't do Twitter very much, but I do that sometimes. And then Instagram, that's all where all the behind the scenes stuff is for all my Fallout skits and Skyrim skits. And yeah, no, I, shoot, that's primarily what I do is Fallout stuff. So I'm excited to be here today to explore the wasteland with some new friends. And your, your TikToks are really good too. Oh yeah, and I do TikTok. But listen, y'all TikTok people, if you're watching, you've been making me mad. Where have you been? Pull up. Oh, no. I love, love y'all anyway. Well, uh, hopefully, hopefully the TikTok pe TikTok people watching, they will start watching again and like clocking. Apparently, and we're getting a little, uh, little bit of echo from okay. uh, us guests, so that is being mentioned. Okay, awesome. Let me turn it down just a little. That might help. Um, let's see, yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, that should be a little bit better. Let me know if it's not. Um, all right. Uh, then we'll jump over to Utahime. Hello, everybody. I'm Utahime. Um, you can find me on social media at U-T-A-H-I-M-E, Utahime Cosplay. Pretty much everywhere, um, except on Twitter, you can find me at Brianna DeCoster. Uh, as the name suggests, I am a cosplayer. Um, I'm also, too, a host, and I am a TTRPG enthusiast and performer, so I'm up to lots of tabletop shenanigans on a weekly basis. I'm also, too, the community manager for the Initiative Order, another amazing uh, community that I hope you guys will come and check us out. We have awesome community games and um, amazing streams that we do over there, including one that I was a part of, one of my first long-term campaigns, which happened to be Vault with our overseer, April. <laughs> So it is, it is awesome to be back in the wasteland again uh, with, uh, with April and also to uh, <laughs> Taryn, who was also too at that table, but it's going to be great to have Andrew and uh, Nywal as well at the table this time around. So let's do this. Let's get wasted. 
Yeah. Um, all right. Yes, that was a, a fun campaign. A campaign where we had started with um, it was before the two D twenty campaign. Uh, the two D twenty game was released by Mundifius, and we were using a D and D adaptation. But this is much better. Um, and then we switched over, uh, like a, a little, like maybe. I can't remember how many sessions in, but we switched over and then finished the campaign out with that. Did some one shots and all that like that. So, um, but yeah, but now here we are on the Modifius Twitch channel giving you Winter of Adam. So here we are. Uh, all right. Uh, and Val Rook. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Taryn, also known as Val Rook across the socials. I am a generally creative human uh, TTRPG player and GM. I am a dice maker under the moniker of Umbral Oculus Dice. That's UO underscore dice on the Instagram. I don't have dice in stock right now because they all sold out because I had a 50% off sale. So there's <laughs> that. Um, I'm also working on uh, TTRPG because I've been working on it for two years and I decided I want to. Um, you can catch me at the Red Hair Inn where I do a bunch of streaming. You can catch me on the Initiative Order on occasion. My specialty is horror, but the Wasteland is just home. So here we are, just to kind of bother April some more with some shenanigans. <laughs> all the shenanigans. I don't mind. <laughs> I love, I love, I love all the shenanigans. I missed all the shenanigans, um, yeah. and I miss being in the overseer seat because right now, I mean, right now I am playing in a um, a Fallout a mini series over on the Initiative Order, but I'm being, a, I'm a player and I'm Ruby Rocket and she's a chaotic little um, uh, Miss Handy unit that has uh, two. Flamer fuels uh, jets, and she she just fires stuff and th blows stuff up, and she's just a little chaotic bundle of joy, because that's what I like to play. But I miss yeah. being in the overseer seat. So no, I I miss having you there because I, I don't know I just do. I'm just um, saying. Yeah, I just do. Um, all right. Uh, before we jump into tonight's session, I did want to give a little bit of a background a little bit of background on uh, Winter of Adam. So, whoops, y'all don't need to see all that. Uh, <laughs> that popped up. Um, okay, so Winter of Adam uh, is first and foremost, a story about co uh, communities struggling to come together and survive a brutal winter, dwindling some food supplies and the last son of Adam's Megalomani megalom megalomaniacal, that's a, that's a mouthful, megalomaniacal, megalo no, I can't say it again, megalomaniacal <laughs> schemes. I didn't do my, I didn't do my vocal exercises before I read this, y'all, I'm, I'm in trouble. Uh, schemes. Uh, and uh, so I will, uh, you all will be making allies with factions and settlements. So this is going to be a little bit different. Oh, that's good. Yeah, this that's is going to be a great. little. This is going to be a little bit different than uh, than what we're, we're, we're normal or we we normally do um, with my groups. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be trying to make allies with factions and settlements and not blow them up or, or fight them. Um, so make friends and uh, <laughs> even unsavory groups. Are we a gang? Oh, gosh, not again. Gang, gang again. <laughs> again. Actually, what color are we going with? Blue? Yes, that's oh my gosh, blue, blue right? obvious. <laughs> obvious. Uh, so even unsavory groups may have invaluable resources or connections that you all can use to further your goals. Uh, the fastest way, so this is important, and we all know, we, some of us, have, we've experienced this, the fastest way to die in nuclear winter is to face the cold alone. So, uh, yeah, this is a cooperative, collaborative storytelling experience. So we all want to play well together. We, uh, we are all in this for a common goal. We're not doing PvP with this, uh, this type of game, uh, you know, with player conflicts might arise. Um, but hopefully we'll talk about that kind of thing behind the scenes if it is and make sure that it is something um, that is uh, RP and not something that's personal. Because uh, if, you, if anybody's uh, out there that has experienced... Um, that at a table, that's not fun. Uh, so that's actually where we're going to start tonight. <laughs> oh gosh, not already. Um, so that's kind of where we're going to start uh, there tonight for our session zero. Um, so we've got our safety and consent tools. Actually, um, if you have if you have played this game before, it is in on page 
three, 318 of the uh, Fallout core book. Uh, so we've got hard and soft nose. Uh, we've got reading the room. Pressing pause is something that's going to be a little bit, um, a, a, I think, very useful. Uh, so, of course, we've got session zero, lines and veils, consent warnings, the X card, and script change, which script change is kind of like pressing pause. Um, so at any time during any of our sessions, if any of you feel uncomfortable about something that's going on, you can automatically put an X in the chat and we will stop there, uh, take a little break and um, nobody's going to judge anybody. We're just going to, you know, we're going to take a break and we're going to take a little breather and we can um, rewind and go back and change a few things if needed or skip over some stuff if needed. Uh, we also have... Um, pause so you can pause the game and go back to a previous save maybe something is not going how you all anticipated not dying if y'all die that's on you um i'm just <laughs> but if something is going down a dark dark tunnel that we did not anticipate or something that's ha is leading y'all somewhere where we did not anticipate as a group um we can automatically we can absolutely press pause and um and go back to a previous save and start over if needed because this is based off of a, off of a real uh, video game so i mean of course we should be able to do that and you should be able to do that in any ttrpg so um so before we jump in before uh before our uh first session i would like all of you to think um of any anything that you might be uncomfortable with um, and we will, um, and, and send that to me so that I can, um, make note of it and we can discuss it all before we play. Uh, so some, some examples of that would be, um, uh, no, no rape or, uh, child abuse or, or so, uh, stuff like that, um, that we obviously, obviously will not touch on. There are some things in here that, um, uh, we will, we will, like, obviously Fallout is very, um, is graphic, so we've got, let's see where it is, uh, it actually says it here on page 318, Fallout, this Fallout series of video games have a mature, uh, ESRB rating, so with warnings for blood and gore and intense violence and strong language and the use of drugs, for example, because we all, it's chems. So chems are considered drugs in this. Um, so yeah, so those are some things that are common in uh, Fallout. So if that's something that you're not comfortable with, obviously you probably don't want to be playing this game. You just need to tell me. <laughs> it is too late. You're here. You know what? I'm, I'm out. I'm no! Out. Um, Everyone gets free mintets and jet. Yes. Oh, wow. oh, God. It's Justin all over again with all the jets. We had a we had a player that uh, lots of jets. So much jet. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Judge Peggy. Oh gosh. Serious <laughs> drama. Uh, all right. Um, okay. So. Uh, <laughs> Bottom line is consent, consent, consent. Yes, that's going to be the name of the game, obviously, for our game, like always. But if you do, like I said, if you do ever feel uncomfortable, we'll play the X card, play the pause button, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, okay, so uh, we went through that. So we've got our lines and veils, content warnings. We talked about the X card, um, script change. And um, now let's discuss. What do we feel like playing? What's everybody? I know we've discussed a little bit behind the scenes, but uh, I just wanna I wanna hear kind of like what you might be interested in um, playing. Who wants to Who wants to talk first? I wanna play sport. Sport. I wanna play sport. Sport is a simple ADHD baby. That's all I know, and I want my vault suit to be a jersey. So a vault dweller. That's their their sport a vault dweller fascinating like, awesome. that's, that's, would, would the jersey look like anything like maybe you might be wearing tonight and... yeah just a little bit like this and then um like 100 percent though like i'm not gonna wear it because it'd be hot as all hell because it's basically <laughs> summer in in texas now um but that's it's true. under armor like let's be honest it's under armor that's under best. this this jersey and that's their vault suit um like that's what i need uh yeah, 
and I'm going to lean into tropes of I need baseball bats and baseball grenades, and that's, that's where I'm going. Awesome. All right, so okay. so you would want to jump to the vault, so a vault, <laughs> your origin, uh, vault origin. So that would be like on page uh, of the core book. It's going to be page 51 through 57. They've got all of the core, yeah. the core characters in the original core book. So, yeah. I've, I've never played anything but a survivor because survivors are the best in Fallout. Uh, but I will step away from my tradition uh, and I will play something different. I gotta, but it's fine. I'm not scared. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Everything's rock, fine. Rock the jumpsuit. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Represent. Yeah. I'll take we're bad people, but you're not. It's all good. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm gonna miss my hunting rifle. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, that is my my thought process is explosives and melee weapons. Here we go. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to lose a hand before the end of this game. Woo! Oh, boy. Uh, okay, well, uh, we've got three new... Uh, we have three new um, new options, new origin options. Uh, and I, I believe we got somebody that's interested in playing a synth. Why don't we talk about that? Oh, you had to call me out, didn't you? Uh-huh, you totally uh-huh. had to call me it's out. It's first on the list in the book. Let's it, talk yeah, about the first synth. The, okay, that's fair. That is, that is fair. So, yes... Uh, I'm looking to play a Gen 3 synth. This Gen 3 synth is named Rob. Well, we're calling him Rob. Uh, part of that, uh, should we reveal his, his designation? Like, do we, do we uh, you, don't have, you don't have to do all that just yet. You know, we can, okay. we can save a little, little bit. We can save so, a little yes, bit. Yes, our, our Gen 3 synth is named Rob. Uh, the inspiration for this character uh, was really quite simple. Uh, if you've ever watched I Ro- the, the film iRobot, think Sunny from iRobot. And that's sort of the basis of what we're going with as far as how Rob will act. Maybe a little a little less naivety or maybe a little more. We're not sure yet. We're going to see how this, uh, this Gen 3 synth as a synth seeker, I think that's the way, the route we want to go here, mm-hmm. uh, will, will meld into this world. Awesome. So, uh, so Generation 3 Synths, uh, so you did say Synth Seeker, Generation 3 Synths in uh, the Winter of Adam will have two options, Synth Infiltrator and Synth Seeker. Uh, I won't give too much away on what all of those um, mean or what you get with those, but uh, with Generation 3 Synths, they are, let's see, we'll read a little bit from the book, give you a little bit of a taste. Um, so uh, they uh, have Atomic Winter Survival Pack. So surviving the harsh realities of Atomic Winter is daunting and no one can make it out there uh, on their wits, wits alone at your discretion. Oh, wait, no, that's not what I was going to read. Um, <laughs> let's the, see. I was looking for the... I, I do have the, the, the page in front of me if you'd like. Trait, okay. the more than human part? or um, a Generation 3 synth, a biosynthetic humanoid, nearly yes. indistinguishable from humans. Yep, that's it. Created by a secret scientific organization known as the Institute. Mm-hmm. You were designed Seem to like integrate... like good guys. Mm-hmm. Good guys. You were designed to integrate into human society. Your lab-grown body is made up of real human flesh, bones, yep. and organs with an undetectable cybernetic implant in your brain that contains your programming. Your bioengineered upgrades make you hardier than humans, and you do not age or change weight. How lucky. Your capacity to keep going for extended periods without needing rest is an excellent advantage in the harsh wasteland. Additionally, your body can survive synthetic implants and cybernetic modifications without complications. Yes, and we will we will just give you that little bit of taste. So, um, so yeah, so those are some of the things that uh, the Generation Three synth uh, get. So they can use they can use chems, but they do not get the benefit of food and drink. And um, yeah, they don't they don't need sleep. So um, this uh, this is from the new upcoming Winter of Adam book. So not released yet, but it's coming out this week. So stay Why tuned. Why does it sound so familiar? <laughs> getting flashbacks because <laughs> i always get the stuff first and i love it it's great i love working for modifius um so yeah so those are some of the things when you're making your character so keep in mind those are some of the some of the things that will um that you will need to um take 
uh, into consideration when you were, we are creating your character, along with if you chose Synth Infiltrator or Synth Seeker, which you said Seeker. So, and we won't tell everybody all the stuff on here because we want them to get the book. You can't just get everything here for free. Huh. Or I'd lose my job probably. And then I wouldn't get all the stuff early. <laughs> and it'd be so sad. Um, all right. And we also have someone that's looking to be next on here, a, a, a Protectron, I believe. Uh, I believe it was described as the most charming Protectron. Probably yes. the most charming robot in the wasteland ever. His, his name will be Stud. And he shall walk amongst the wastes, providing cheer and joy and happiness to all the American people. Strictly American people. <laughs> Apparently in the Fallout universe. <laughs> Full hands, yes. <laughs> Modifius is a UK based gaming company. We love you, love. <laughs> this is great. This is great. <sighs> wop, wop. It's, it's absolutely hilarious. Yes. Yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, Stud the Protectron. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited because <laughs> they waddle and are likely not good at stealth. And I'm just, I'm wondering how we're going to go about doing things. Uh, the only option is to, like, if we're going to be sneaky, we're going to have to leave him behind. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it's. I'm excited. Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, okay, so for Protectrons, you have a few options. You get to choose uh, from your origins. You get Protectron base. Uh, or <laughs> <laughs> just basic Protectron. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Protectron Fire Brigader. Mm. A Nucatron. Protectron X. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, an ult, a utility Protectron and a Protectron Medic. Um, yeah, so you've got a, a, couple little, a couple little goodies to choose from there See, you can look that at. That utility one's looking pretty, pretty sexy for my boy Stud. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Utility, you say? Yes, yes. This is sounding a little bit uh, PG for me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this group is going to be so much Y'all, we had Robin Bob. Anyways, go ahead. We, we're going to have so much fun with this group. Like, y'all are not going to be able to control us. Um, it's gonna be, I'm not going to be able to control y'all. What am I saying? I have to, I have to rein in. This is not ready for, my, not ready oh, for me. I'm so sorry. I'm going to apologize in advance for any and all viewers. I have a horrible potty mouth and an excessively ridiculous childish sense of humor and will make pee pee jokes. It's fine. Um, it's, it's like it said before the Fallout series of video games has a, a mature ESRB rating. I think we're good. We're good for that. Just, uh, Just be quiet. Uh, I'm apologizing for absolutely nothing right now. Letting you know that we're, we're, we're here for chaos, dang it. We're here for chaos. Yep, yep. Uh, and we'll we'll just like throw a sheet or something over a stud. It'll be fine. Yes. Like, nobody yeah. will see them. It'll be yeah. okay. Let's talk. Thanks. Let's talk about some of the things that you do get as a Protectron, though. Um, so once per scene, you may reroll a test to overcome an environmental hazard. This is something you just get as a Protectron and use the new result. This is because you were built to survive harsh environments. Um, you, can also, you are also immune, of course, to disease and radiation and poison damage. It's like, a, well, of course you would be. But you cannot use chems like sense you cannot use chems and you cannot benefit from food drink or rest um and you cannot recover from your injuries or heal health uh heal health points without receiving repairs so we will need robot repair kits for you but our synth on the other hand can take a stim pack so but you somebody's gonna need to be able to repair little oh you <laughs> she's gonna be stud yelling repair me Please. I got, oh, <laughs> I got your back there, bro. Hang on. Thank you. There's just going to be sport being like, hang on, bro. I'm coming. I'm just all happy. Just, just doing the thing. Just, oh, man. Yeah, it's going to be, we're, we're in trouble. I'm going to miss stim packs, but it'll be okay. It'll be fine. You get robot repair kits. You get to be special. S-P-E-C-I-A-L. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody, hopefully somebody has an, a high eye. 
to repair you with high in intelligence. It's good. Um, so yeah, so you have a few uh, a few options to choose from on uh, on the rest of your Protectron build, other than what you get at the basics. And then uh, I think we also have a child of Adam, possibly. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, so I was thinking of going child of Adam because it's definitely very, very, very different from uh, the character that I brought to your table initially. Uh, so we're like, hey, we're going to go totally opposite of that. Super mutant, very like smash them, bash them type mm -hmm. to um, a, a, a let's enlighten people about the wonders of Adam. <laughs> so she's actually, um, I, I really uh, liked the idea of her being an apostle of eternal light uh, okay. in particular um, within uh, the children of Adam. Um, she may or may not have received what she feels is a vision from the mother of fog, that shoulder that she's meant to head in the direction of Diamond City. Uh, so if you uh, think of any type of uh, born again mm -hmm. Christian and a bunch of dashes of like splashes of Jehovah's Witness in there, maybe a tiny bit of monk, sprinkle it on top. You know, that's that's basically uh, my character. Uh, I, I feel like her name, I wanted to name her something that kind of has some meaning. Uh, some people may or may not kind of put things together. Uh, her name is gonna be Magdalena Suarez. Um, and uh, her, you know, she just goes by the name, nickname Maggie. So, uh, Anybody that she befriends will probably call her that. But uh, some fun, some fun shenanigans to be had with this child of Adam. I love sure. it. I'm so excited. Oh, this is ah, I'm just so excited about like all these characters. I can't tell. I cannot tell you enough um, because there's some good stuff in here that's going to happen. Uh, all right. Um, so some uh, options that you have, we have for uh, Child of Adam in your origin. We've got a uh, missionary and a zealot. Hmm. So, uh, yeah. uh, this is tough because I feel like <laughs> a zealot would be definitely very, very chaotic, but I feel like she's trying to spread the good word. Uh, so I think I'm going to probably go more missionary in this situation. Yeah, I agree. Um, cool. Well, some stuff that you get right off the bat. Because we're giving you a little bit of taste, everybody that's watching, of Winter of Adam. So uh, you have a trait called Rad Sponge. So your base radiation damage resistance automatically is one. So that's your base radiation damage resistance. And I love radiation. It's mm -hmm. like if you love the sun, you're just soaking it up. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. yes, give me that good radiation, you know, like that tan, mm -hmm. nice uh, glow. Yes, we all want the glow. The glow. You're looking extra the glow. Green today. Extra glow. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I was out uh, you know, just uh, radiating my body for, you know, ten hours. It's fine. Yeah, so this one has that a little bit like uh, like with like what ghouls do. So ghouls they absorb radiation. So children of Adam also do that just a little bit. You get a, you get a little bit of radiation resistance, um, and once per scene, when someone is in close range to you and would lo uh, would take radiation damage. So this is something similar to like something that you can do in D&D. Um, so when someone in close range to you would take radiation damage, you can choose to take it instead. So yeah, if someone's near you and they're about I'm to take sponge. some radiation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're just like, no, that's for me. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> and on top of that, you, <laughs> you gain, uh, on top of that, you gain one radiation point up to a maximum of five. So think like similar to luck mm -hmm. points, you gain okay. one radiation point up to a maximum of five. Um, when you hit with a melee attack, then if you've absorbed these uh, radiation, when you hit with a melee attack, you can spend st you can spend stored radiation points. For every point you spend, you deal an additional two d six radioactive energy damage nice. um, that's applied separately after inflicting the attack's normal damage. And when you sleep, however, you do lose one radiation point. So if you were like up to your max of five, and then you take a you take a rest, you, you start losing losing a little bit day by day. So, so I, you know, I just should never 
sleep at all. I should just <laughs> be totally wired on that that radiation. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> so I don't lose those points. Yeah, it's like that use it or lose it type thing. So, yeah, that's really cool. That's crazy cool. That's insane. <laughs> use it or yes. lose it. Oh, oh, it. It's like party hard, oh. Andrew WK there. <laughs> Um, all right, so I do have a, um, a little, uh, if everybody can see on um, on the screen here, on our little overlay, we do have what the character sheet looks like if you've never played this before, or if you have, this looks familiar to you. Uh, it sounds like all of your characters will be using this character sheet. Nobody's playing a Mr. Handy, so we do not um, need to pull up a Mr. Handy sheet. And the Protectron does not have a different sheet than the, um, the other humanoid type characters in this game. So everybody will be using this type of character sheet. We do have a campaign in Roll20 um, that we will be using uh, during the stream. You'll be able to see dice rolls. We will be, um, we, we do love uh, our physical Fallout dice. They are amazing, but uh, we will be using um, the digital dice. Well, I mean, sometimes if you want to sometimes roll with your physical dice, because I know Almost all of you have them. You certainly can. They're so good. Because yes. I just have all of... I'm a, di- a dice... I was like 1% of the ones you have. Let's be real. Yeah. Uh, yep. No, wait for it. All the dice. You need, you need one of the, the popcorn bucket. The D20 popcorn yeah, bucket. Yeah, I do. But I had this bag custom made because it matches my soul. Support local businesses, y'all. Jace. <laughs> well, shout out. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so for your character sheets. So now that we all have your origins um, and we know what you're going to be playing, and you've thought about uh, what um, what origin you've picked, your little uh, sub sub variant of your origin you're going to pick. Uh, you got that on your sheet. Now we need to choose our specials. S-P-E-C-I-A-L-S, because Mama made us all special, right? Um, and, uh, or, or Adam, or, or your maker. Uh, so, or the Institute. Adam, of course. Oh, Adam, Hello. the Institute, your maker. Yeah, all, that's all the General Motors, it's great. Um, you guys all seem like you have a lot of parental figures. So many. Um, all right, so uh, you're going to be choosing your specials. Each, uh, they each start with a base of five, so each of them has five. None of them can be below a four, um, but you can lower one of them down to a four. If, you, if you're like, ah, my intelligence should not be a five, which is like the bottom, yeah, you can make it a four. You can drop it down to a four, absolutely, and then you can spend that can point somewhere else. Can I drop two else. of them down? You, yeah, you can. Please just don't go charisma and luck like Jake Casual did. Like, just please do not. <laughs> no, actually, those are the two that I'm dropping. Oh, oh gosh, no luck and no charisma. Oh, max yeah. out those, max, maxing out those two. Gosh, the, that was game breaking. That was that was game breaking. It was a beautiful play style. And I do recommend that if you've not toyed with it in this system, I recommend you go with a charisma luck character. Just go for it. See how it goes. Well, Rob, or, or not Rob, Stud did survive a plane crash. Sounds pretty lucky to me, but I don't know, I don't know. And something that's awesome about luck, so one thing that's uh, really cool about luck is it it does something um, that none of your other stats really do. So you don't use luck in a lot, like in a lot of tests, unless you really want to. Um, so with luck point, uh, so your luck stat also turns into luck points. It's the same amount that you get per scene. So luck points can be used uh, to find keys, ammo you need, weapons you want, info you need. Um, maybe there you're in the middle of combat and you need an escape route, something like that. You can also do. I'm not worried about any of that. <laughs> well, you might because in this well, game, in the winter of Adam, it's a lot harsher than well, I, than uh, what we've done before. I I know it's sports a dingbat. Yes, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to, to meet sport. Um, okay, you can also uh, use stack the deck uh, where you spend one luck point to use your luck skill instead of another attribute. You can use lucky timing to take your turn and initiative um, out of order. Misfortune, uh, you can use one luck point to reroll 1d20 or 3d6 damage dice. So, uh, so lots of stuff that you can do with luck. So that's something that... Um, 
depending on you know how you feel about that. Uh, so yeah, so like I said, each starts with five. You can drop it down to a minimum of four. Then after that, you have an additional five points to place as you wish, wherever you want, and any of the other stats. And some of you, uh, some of you might, depending on your origin, you might, it might say that, like if you were a super mutant, uh, it gives you extra strength um, and stuff like that. So depending on your origin, it might have told you to add more, uh, you get more points in your specials. Um, I don't think that any of you did. I don't think that Child of Adam gets anything um, other than with the radiation. Mm -hmm. I think the Vault Dweller, though, Taryn, for you, I think that you get to choose um, an extra tag skill. There's, I would have to look at it, but um, yeah, there's there's some stuff like that with that, so you might have to look at that. Um, but Synth, I don't think really has any anything for your specials, um, and so yeah. So, so yeah, you start with five, you get an additional five, and if you drop any of them down to a four, you get an extra point to use where you see fit. Um, and if you just want to use an example of numbers that you can use you can look at page 58 on the core book and um let's see okay that's fine uh, i'm going to let one of these slide it's going to be fun sorry i had to look at our moderation um, okay, because uh, I'm modding the stream. I'm modding, I'm teching, I'm doing all the things on the set. And then tomorrow, if you watch Star Trek Adventures, I tech that too, but I'm not in the stream. I'm just behind the scenes. Um, yeah, and it's episode two tomorrow, Star Trek Adventures, uh, using the Shackleton Expanse book. Okay, so after you get your specials, then we're going to go to step three. I, I actually wrote these down to like make it easier for me. I call it step three. You get to choose your tag skills. Um, so your, ta your skills are on your character sheet. I'll pull mine up. Uh, so your uh, so your skills are things like athletics, barter, big guns, energy weapons, explosives, etc. So that little skills list. So those are... Um, you, you get to choose three tag skills. So those are gonna be like your specialties. So the three things that you're like automatically pretty good at, right? Uh, you automatically get two points in each of those. In any of the tag skills that you choose, you get two, two free points in those, uh, in those three tag skills. And your origin also might say that you get an extra tag skill or you might pick a perk that says you get an extra tag skill. We'll just um, go over that, you know, later so if you uh, end up doing to going that route um and then after that you get to spend any additional skills so you get your three tag skills put two points in those um and at level one none of these can be above a three so just so you know at level one none of these can be above a three but after you hit level two any of these can be above a six, or up to a six and then they cap out at six after that so level one we won't go above a three on any of these so now we're going to spend additional skill points. So you calculate nine plus whatever your intelligence score is. So on your specials, whatever you put for your intelligence, you're going to do nine plus that. And then that's how many points you get to put in whatever other tag skill or whatever other skills you want. Those will not be tag skills. Um, you only get three unless your origin or your perk says that you have more than more tag skills. So, um, so yeah, you just calculate that out. Uh, so if your intelligence was a four, then you have 13 extra points to, to put in your skills. Yeah. It's not my Star Trek adventures, my Star Trek adventures. Oh, okay. Yes. I see what you did there. <laughs> yes. It's fun. I get to learn the game while I run tech. It's beautiful. It's like a double, like double awesome. Um, all right. Yeah. So I said, uh, no skill can have over three points at starting at level one. But after you get to level two, then the max is six. Uh, some skills will have zero points. Yes, Taryn. Sorry. I have an important question. Yes. So in the book, it does say on explosives that I can swap out strength for perception if I'm just trying to lob shit. Yep. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure that you were cool with that as a GM. Oh. I mean, I've got that on there, but one of those skills is definitely higher than the other one. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, cool. well, it'll yeah. be, it'll be per, like, we'll see when the scene arises, oh, yeah. if it makes sense, which with, for you, I feel like the scene will most likely play out in your favor for that. Oh, so yeah. yeah. 
I'm going to, I mean, I just, one of those skills is definitely better than the other. So I was just wondering. No, it's all good. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, so we'll do that. Uh, and then uh, uh, after we do, uh, you spend your additional skill points. Like I said, some of them will be zero and that's perfectly normal. Um, it's cool. You don't have to put, put points in all of them. Just put points where you want. Uh, cannot be more than three in any of them right now. Uh, then we get to look at the perks. They are on in the core book, pages 59 through 73. Uh, and starting at level one, you get one perk. Um, so yeah, and uh, uh, at higher levels, when you end up getting like 20 perks, it's a lot to remember. So we do have perk cards that we sell. Uh, so if anybody is playing in some high level campaigns or even low level, or even if you're just a collector, you can go on the Metaphase website and you can get the perk cards uh, to keep track of your perks because they are very helpful. Trust me, we have played in some high level campaigns and then it's like, oh crap. Um, uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, what, what does Vicious do again? I'm forgetting. Vicious is... is this, oh, gosh, you're the going to... bonus the, damage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ignores... Is that piercing? No, Vicious is one damage per effect rolled. Ooh. So if you rolled, like, three, three um, of the Vault Boys, then it'd be six damage total if, you, if it's Vicious on one of them. Yeah. Um, the, yes, the core bug. I'm going to say. Because I am torn. No, no, no. Yeah, just figuring things out here. Oh, no, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Um, It should be available for you in Roll20 as well, I think. Andrew? Um, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I actually was able to pull up the character sheet on here. It is quite cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. super slick. I just got to go through all the math again, mm -hmm. which you can do. Um, yeah, I oh, can see that. What? I didn't see it on here. Mm -hmm. That's so nifty. Well, the character you sheet? guys, the character sheet on Roll20, it, I highly recommend. It's beautiful. It, it yeah. is super, like, it's it vibrant. Yeah. I'm going to be looking a... at it, and I, 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 I feel happy because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, this stuff is so nice. It's so sleek. Yeah, and so you'll be able to put everything in, in mm. on Roll20. Uh, yeah, you put, you can... Click your tag skills. You can put your points in there for your specials and your XP and your levels, and you can track your luck points. Um, you yes. can, uh, yes, and you will also be over at the top left corner of the character sheets in Roll20. Uh, it's got a little D20 and it's got a little Vault Boy symbol, and that's where you can calculate, uh, that's where you can roll your D20s, and that's where you can roll your, um, your uh, D6s. So. Yeah, so then we can have them in here. What? I know, right? It's great. Wait, it's can you go over that one more time? Where can you do the role? That was so bad. If, when you open your character sheet, you can rename your character. So I have a, your yeah. character sheet on there. At the top left corner of the character sheet, there's a little blue box with a D20 and a little blue box with the Vault Boy symbol. I just blew yes. my hand off. Oh, and you can do attribute and skill. You can put oh, everything oh. in there. Yeah. Fancy schmancy. Yeah, so if you are playing in the wasteland with your friends virtually and not in person, or even if you are playing in person, you can still do it this way. It's really fun. I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people prefer, prefer pen and paper, you know, character sheets. But if you prefer a, um, a digital one, uh, the Roll20 ones are pretty sick. And it has all the things you need for it. Um, but yeah, I mean, even uh, it even... You, uh, it's got your core sheet, your perk sheet, and your gear sheet. So it's got little tabs to switch over to those. And um, yeah, you can even, uh, if you are playing a Mr. Um, Mr. Handy, you can toggle the robot sheet. It's got your HP, everything on there. It looks exactly like this, um, like the character sheet that I have here on our overlay. Um, but yeah, so. Um, this is hard. <laughs> Wait, There's are so you going explodey, or are uh, you like that's the thing? Are you going more repair oops. or explodey? Okay, boom, everything. So, 
I'm taking athletics, explosives, repair, and melee. Now, perk-wise, I am pursuing thoroughly melee smack you in the face to death. Um, I'm currently, because I love Adrenaline Rush, because it's busted, because if I take any damage at all, my strength score pretends to be 10. Uh, so I love that, um, because that's beautiful for everything. Um, the other one I'm looking at, of course, is Big Leagues, and that's because I'm theming. Um, but maybe that's um, that might be down the road. Uh, but Adrenaline well, I'm Rush. I'm asking is because I know that uh, this is something before we went live, where it was like, are we? which one of us will be the one to fix the robo men. <laughs> oh my god. I will are you repair I, or am I gonna be because I, I am I repair explosives for myself. I got I got repair. I got repair. Okay. I've I wanna bask in his glow. <laughs> yeah, that's glow. fine. Uh, I can repair him very well. Uh apparently. So we got you on that front. Uh I just have to decide if I want to scrap some luck to be really smart. <laughs> or if I need that luck. Uh, but also, yeah, no, um, I'm legitimately looking at all of the things that let me just punch somebody in the face. Good. Maybe hacker down the road. Sport is a weird character, y'all. I can't begin to explain their backstory, but just wait. It makes no sense. And I love it. Uh, I'm trying to work on getting that uh, link to you, Andrew. I've got it. No worries. <laughs> yes. I think I might have sent it to you just now. Let's see. It's a big one. So, um, All right. And then... Here we go. It's so smart for me to take big leagues at some point, though, because that's so much owie. <laughs> um, so you get one perk, and then when you level up, so when you level up, of course, you get an extra perk, you get um, an extra HP, and you get an extra point for skills. So that's really nice when you level up. Uh, so, but when you start to get, I'm not trying to, what is it? I'm just trying to, my phone keeps trying to do things that I don't want to do. Um, all right. Uh, then, so after you choose your perk, you get to determine your defense. So, your defense is on uh, your character sheet. So, let's see. So, your defense. Um, you, you determine from your agility score. So if your agility is eight or less, you get a defense of one. And if your agility score on your specials is a nine or more, you get a defense of two. That means it's basically how hard it is to hit you. So think of like if you've ever played um, like D&D, &D, it's kind of like your AC. This is kind of like your AC score, but it's way better, like in way easier and simplified. Uh, so it's like uh, you need a success of, I need an ex a success of one to hit you, or I need a success of two to hit you. And sometimes uh, your defense can even go up from there. Um, like if you take adamantium skeleton, um, well, it doesn't increase your defense, but it does make it hard, harder to give you a critical. So I love adamantium skeleton. It's my, one of my favorite, um, perks. Uh, I am so torn. <laughs> um, I, I really can't decide, like, I just can't decide if I need the luck or if I want to be real smart. We'll figure it out. Uh, let's see what else we have. Okay, uh, so uh, that's your defense, and then on your character sheet, um, it shows you where your defense is. So it's kind of like to the top right of your little vault boy, um, where the head is, and the right arm, and right leg, and all that. So uh, then, uh, next, you will determine your initiative. So in this game, we do not roll for initiative. In this game, your initiative is set. Sometimes it can go up or down um, after you level, but sometimes it stays the same. Uh, and just like I said before, if you have a luck, po uh, if you spend a luck point because you want to move up or down an initiative, it's it's there for you. So there there is there are ways to change initiative a little bit. So you determine your initiative by um, adding your perception 
plus your agility. So whatever your P and your A is, are in specials, um, that will determine your initiative. And that is also kind of like where your defense was on the character sheet. And then we're going to determine your health, your hit points. Uh, to do that, it's going to be endurance plus luck. So whatever your E and L are. So yeah, all of these, ugh, it's really hard. And sometimes it's like, oh man, I think I should have, I know, your HP is going to be like, what, nine? Is that why you made the face? <laughs> And some of y'all were like, what? Okay, yeah. Uh, your health will be low. It's fine. It's fine. Starting out, we're fine. level one. I mean, is 13 bad? No. Okay. Oh, no. You're good. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, she is always around radiation, so I figured it <laughs> has to be, you know, decent. Mm -hmm. uh, you glow, girl. You look, oh, I love that so much. That should be like one of your, your taglines. No, I just thought about it. Because when you're a child of Adam, you already have the soul glow. I don't know if people understand that. That, that reference might have gone over your head. Okay, glow. never mind. Nobody remembers soul glow? Okay, I'm going to be quiet now. <laughs> I, love I may or may not need a little help just getting everything uh, calculated. But uh, yeah. no worries, I'm still figuring it all out here. So that's, okay. that's cool. If yeah. you're using the sheet on the roll 20, does it not do it for you? Uh, it does, but I completely whiffed on some of the actual additions of things. So yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> no worries, like like I said, like uh, we're here, and um, I think I'm representing we who are new to uh, yes. calculate the sheets. This actually, I believe, this is the first. Uh, this is the first yeah. uh, Fallout sheet I've actually calculated. So I'm. It's oh, like yeah. really a wild ride and getting to see like how intense it is. It's it's really fun because I think the one character that I got to play, uh, the, the sheet was pre-generated for me. So mm -hmm. it's kind of cool to yeah, make this my own, if yes. you know what I mean. Yes. Yeah, and that's something about um, about Fallout. It is uh, Fallout, the role-playing game. It, the, the most daunting part of it, and I've told, I mean, I've taught this game to so many people, but uh, the most daunting part of it is just creating the character. After that... It's a breeze. Everything else past character creation is a breeze. Um, and I feel like that's a lot like with a lot of uh, TTRPGs, it's like that. But this this one, it, it is. It's a, it's a it's special a doozy. one. It's yes. a doozy. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. Ooh. So, I realized something. So, as a as a protectron, I can have one arm that's like a railway rifle, yeah, mm -hmm. and then I have just a claw. Say I pick up, you know, a Gauss rifle. Can uh -huh. I use a Gauss rifle pretty regular, or do I gotta replace the arm? Yeah, because you don't have um, a claw arm. I think. You know what? And I don't think I read that you can't, but I would think that you would need a claw arm to use a weapon to, to interact and use. Um, but then again, one of them, it has two electric arms. Because you know it, it does say that the railway rifle loses the two handed quality. Mm hmm. So I don't know. I'm, just, I'm curious. Yeah, this is one that I'm going to have Ooh. to act, ask our developers. So if you will, if you will remind me, I that's a good you. question. That's a yeah, because I, I was like, I was like, I don't know if I'll be railway railway boy for life, but you know, I might. But it depends. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question because I'm I'm not quite sure because this is a whole new this is a whole new origin that you get to use. Um, yeah, it's a very good question. Let's see. All right, so we've got initiative, so perception plus agility, and uh, then health, endurance plus luck. 
whatever those two are. That's going to be your health, endurance plus luck. Uh, then you're going to determine your melee and unarmed damage. So if you have a strength above, uh, a strength of 7 to 8, you get an extra d6 of damage. If you have a strength of 9 to nine or nine to 10, you get an extra plus 2d6 to damage. And if your strength is above 11, which I don't think anybody else should be, uh, it's usually only for super mutants, you get an extra 3d6 worth of damage. So uh, anytime you do an, uh, do an unarmed attack automatically, it's 2d6 worth of damage. So all of y'all should have 2d6. But if your strength is 6 to, six to 8, you get an extra one, so it'll be 3. If your strength is 9 to 10, you get... Uh, an ex another extra one, so it would be 46 total, and then if it's plus uh, 11 plus, then it'd be five total for an unarmed attack. Wait, so for a strength, for example, of seven, that's uh, you get it's 3d6 total for any kind of unarmed attack, yeah. But if it's below, if it's six or below, then you just get the basic 2d6. I think this is working. I hope so. Let me see. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm sending it to you through your email. Yes. <laughs> It'll be easier that way because I was going to try to do it on Discord and I'm like, no, we're just going to do it right now. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. No, we've got... Um, so any questions so far? Anything I need to go back on? Other, I know the perks are going to be something for, for you. Um, no. Andrew? So, uh, just remind me again, the initial point allocation, because like I said, I, I yes. got blinked. Oh, you're fine, I, you're fine? Yeah. So, okay. Uh, what was the initial point allocation again? Okay, so your specials, so the top ones, the S-P-E-C-I-A-L, they all yeah. get five. All get five, okay, so five, okay. Five blank, five blank. Uh -huh. hey, and I then work. and then you get five extra points to put in any of those that you want. So you okay. could put all five in one of them, or you could spread them out. You could put one over here, one over here, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. So okay. five, yeah, you got five. So they all start with five, and then you get five extra points. Five extra points. I yeah. see now. <clears throat> Find man to his deaf son. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, and that's kind of like, and you can play around with it a little bit if you ended up, um, if you end up like, mm, I don't really want, I don't want to do that. Maybe I want to do something different. Um, yeah, you can mess around with them after. Uh, you just have to remember what you did when you start having to recalculate your defense and your initiative right, and all right, that. Right. Okay. So I got all that. Hmm, that seems so. That seems so blasé. We're not going to do that. <laughs> we're not going to do that. No, we're going to do that. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That looks nicer. Mm -hmm. I just want to hurt people. On you know, I just want to hit people for a lot of damage, and <laughs> then fix our robot. You know, like so. There's so many things that I want to do. But I think I got it built down. I still haven't decided if I'm scrapping luck or not, but you know. Hmm. Um, okay, so did you get your specials? Yep, specials are good. Okay, and then did you get your tag skills? So you get th uh, three, right? Three each, three, and they all have two points in them automatically. And then after that, you get more points by taking nine plus your intelligence score. So whatever you put in your intelligence score under your specials. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever the I is, you add that to nine, and then that's how many points you have to to figure out where you want to put in the rest of them. And so is that like uh, increasing the rank on these? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so fifteen points. Fifteen points, love it. Okay. Yeah, and then um, and none of them can go above a three, but some of them can be a zero. But starting at level one, none of them can go above a three. 15. 12, I'm counting down because I'm keeping a counter in my head. I'm at 12. I know. Let, let's, yeah, yeah. 
It's great. 11. We got 10. Nine. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. But I said, I said 10, right? Uh huh. And then you yeah, said I'm nine. Gonna, I said nine. Okay, I said nine. You said ten, and then you said nine, but then I don't I know. I did say nine. I did say nine. You're right. This is this is the fun part of creating a character. And like, I don't remember anything. And we have tools for this, right? And I'm not using the tools. No, no, it's good. No, uh, uh, yeah, like I always have to like I go through and I mark down, and I'm like, and where am I at now? And then like I make tally marks when I make character sheets. Right. I'm a... Oh yeah, tell, the tally marks are good. All right, we're at eight. Oh, puppy. So just literally gonna throw like. It's an IRL dog meat. It really is. <laughs> Sweet puppy. Puppy, Asamondius, or Zim, as we call him for short. Mm. Zim, I always do call him. Seven, no, I don't want to make specials. Six. Did anybody else have like any questions so far that they're going through? Any issues? Anything about perks? Like any questions about any of the perks or anything? No. I do trying. have a question. Yes. Really quick. Because I'm very, very curious about something that I learned uh, okay. regarding demolitions experts. Oh, okay. So what does this mean exactly when it says uh, you unlock explosive recipes oh. which have this perk as a requirement? Oh, um, okay. So I cook up some, some spicy meatballs yes so uh, when you go to uh, a weapons workbench and you are cr crafting explosives which I know we didn't do a lot of crafting like when we played this uh, before in our other stream um, uh, but yes if you are craft if you want to craft some items some items require that you have um, a certain higher uh, a certain level in in, in that so um, so yeah that'd be uh, some, so if you feel like you're going to be crafting stuff and you're going to be doing that, that's something that you would want to take a few ranks in. Okay, so then um, to craft for that, um, what um, should I focus as far as my um, ranks and my skills? Let's see. Let me take I a look. I'm curious about that. I was trying to find that and I yeah. think I may have missed it. <laughs> yeah, so demolitions expert. Okay, um, so it's got one rank. Oh. Uh, so you can't you can't level this up. Okay, so um, it's got one rank. Uh, you have to have at least a perception of six and at least a luck of six. So on your specials, you at least have to have a six perception and a six uh, luck. And um, uh, when you make an attack using a weapon with the blast quality, okay, so that's what this one says. When you make an attack using a weapon with the blast quality, the attack gains vicious damage, which we talked about that earlier. So vicious is like when you roll one of the, the vault boys, it does extra damage. Um, it gains the, vis, vis, the, the vicious damage effect. In addition, you unlock explosive recipes, which have this part as a requirement. So um, if we go to... I want those recipes. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, find... Okay. Survival crafting two nine. I'm gonna be the emerald. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. All right. Repair. Yeah. So mainly, yeah. So armor. And then that's chemist, syringer. Armor and science. Where's looking for it? Hmm. We can always come back to it. I was just yeah. curious because I was like, if there are certain things that I need to, uh, you know, look into cars on the side of the road, yeah. and random little crates for little pieces here and there. Yeah, it, well, it, I, it would be in the, it's just taking me a minute to find it. Um, nuke mines or even nuke grenades exist. <laughs> nice. We were talking about, what well, we were talking about earlier, a basketball one. 
Yeah. <laughs> basketball. I want a basketball one. <laughs> Not a baseball, but a basketball. I want a basketball <laughs> grenade. Um, but that's actually a question I have. So for yes. anybody that feels like chiming in, should I take unarmed or explosives? I have melee. It's a test. Two explodey explodies. <laughs> All the boom boom? All the boom boom. Okay. Yeah. I would. I mean, okay. like, I have this, like, I have this image of my head of the flying basketball grenade, and then it lights on fire, and it's like oh NBA gosh. jam. <laughs> Just start queuing, like, all of the, like, the old school, what was it? Uh... Oh my, he's on fire! Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my well, yeah, god. I did take repair, so all robots that need repair are safe. Oh, good. Got one. We know, we know of. Um, yeah, I'll have to look. I'll have to. I'm not finding it, but I know I it's a little bit of repair. It's <laughs> just I wanted my tax scale to be explosive for reasons. Understand? <laughs> no, I I feel that. I currently have explosives as the tag. I just can't. I hadn't decided if I was gonna leave it at explosives or if I wanted to pop that one over to like unarmed or throwing or something fun. But I think. I don't know what I would do with throwing. Like, why would I throw a weapon when I can throw something that goes boom? You know? Hmm. I just don't don't see it. Um, okay, uh, Andrew, did you get all of your skills? Your yes, skill points spent? I, am, I am now at the perk. Okay. Right. Um, yes. yes, you get to choose perk on page 59 to 73. Did you get the doc in your email? I sure did. Is it downloading? <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I actually uh, I got it almost fully downloaded now. Okay. I, I'm, no, I'm, I'm right at the perk, so I'm looking through these all. Okay. These are interesting. These yeah. Are quite interesting. Yeah. Um, but like a uh, like we were just talking about with the demolition expert, so some of them do have requirements on them. Uh, so for example, I mean we kind of just talked about it, but so let's see. Um. Where is it? For an example, like I said, like I love adamantium skeleton. So you can take up to three ranks an adamantium skeleton, but the requirements are you at least have to have an endurance of seven and um, you at least have to be one plus level. Uh, so you at least have to be right. level one. Um, so, but the thing is you can't say for your first three perks, you can't, cause you can take this perk three times, right? Um, that's four. I was like this. Uh, you can take this perk three times. However, you can't take them at level one, two, and three because after you read all that, it says each time you take this perk, the level requirement increases by three. So um, you can take it at level one, and then you can take it at level uh, so level four, right? So it increases by three, level one plus three, uh, and then it increases by three again. So you can take, so you have to wait a little bit before you level up that perk. Um, some of these, it doesn't have several ranks, but Adamantium Skeleton um, does. Like Action Boy and Girl, there's only one rank, and that one has no requirements. You can just take it if that's what your heart tells you to take. Um, Let's see, uh, another... There's so many perks, it's amazing. <laughs> Is anybody, so I'm um, just so I'm prepared. <laughs> Is anybody taking the dog meat perk? <laughs> what? No, I'm not. I've had a game where three people took the dog meat perk. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, you have a dog meat. Who needs the dog meat perk when you actually have dog meat? <laughs> um, I feel like I'm going to be... I feel like I'm going to be the gunman of this team because, like, um, like at the synths, I think ba based on based on the the pack I'm picking, mm -hmm. I get I'm automatically getting a gun already. So I think like the first pick I have, well, I want to take is like uh, the quick draw uh, perk, which would make sense. Oh right? yes, if you okay, if you want if you want <laughs> gun notes, I got to tell you, quick draw <laughs> is your friend. Uh, let me look real quick. Like I will tell you my favorite perk for Peggy because it basically just mm -hmm. meant, oh, it's center mass. The mm -hmm. moment you can take center mass, like you never will miss again. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty freaking beefy. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. It's insane. Peggy had yeah. all. 
the I had all of shooter, <laughs> like all the shooter friendly ones. Okay, so uh, so April, just to make sure, yes. let's, we, there's a there's three perks for us at the at the beginning. Uh, it... Only one, one only perk. One? Okay. Yeah, only oh, one. Good to know. Just making sure. Yeah. I didn't want to. Didn't want to try anything. Here. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Every time you uh, so every time uh, you gain a level, so every time we level up, you will gain uh, a, another perk, another okay. HP, and another point to add in any of the skills that you want. Um. So yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay, I need you to delete because like, I added it. Well, I'm going to need one for later. So, yeah, we'll leave that there for now. But I only have one perk. We're, we're taking quick draw right now. Okay, it's a good one. It's a good one. Okay. Um, let's see. And I think Justin also used that one in our game, too. Uh, okay. okay, and then the, you determine your defense. What's your agility? Uh, I, I kept that at six. Okay, so then your, your, uh, your defense is uh, a one. So on your character sheet, your defense is just a one. That means yeah. that I only have to roll one success to hit you. Ha, <laughs> ha. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Just, uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. You know? It's good. It's mo most of the time because you can only have a defense of one or two. So it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's fine. Uh, determine your initiative. So your perception plus your agility. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's calculated. Okay. Uh, then your health is endurance plus luck. Health is endurance plus... <laughs> mm. What's your health? What's your health? I'm dying to know. Oh, uh, endurance plus... Oh, endurance plus luck is 11? Normal. That's normal. That starting out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's I fine. read it wrong. I don't. I don't know how to. I don't know how numbers. So, uh, eleven. Yes. Eleven. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> um, okay. What's your strength? Same. Strength. 11. I actually kept it a five. Okay. Then uh, your unarmed is just gonna do two d six. Cool. You don't get a bonus. That's fine. Unarmed is two. Are any of you a what uh, sport? Are you the only one who does anybody have above a? Uh, does anybody have above a seven in for strength? What, for which one? Strength? No. Um, <laughs> four. I have a seven right now. I mean, if I lose the luck point, then I will have eight. But I haven't decided. So we don't have any strong, strong, strong arms in this one? I mean, I'm about to change that up because I'm That's like... Fine. Just, just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my dude a little... Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take away from his charisma. Oh. You, you, don't, you don't need that. You're, you're, you're a freaking synth, boy. Charismatic and, uh, synth. He, yeah, and you know what? He's not that. You know, we're we're gonna take away from your intelligence. You know, because you know. <laughs> yeah, I just can't decide if I want to have an eight in intelligence or an eight in strength. I also, I also either realize, one's like, good. The seek this uh, synth, like I guess part of this, I either get knuckles or a lead pipe. That might be fun. I am. Stuck between inspirational, mm -hmm. oh the perks, jerky vendor, and infiltrator. Yeah, Ooh. those are tough. Though. Oh, infiltrator, the lockpick. Is anybody being lockpicky? No. So you have to have I at least not. a perception of eight. Okay. Yeah. So I moved my lock endurance pick. point to bump up my perception. Mm. Oh, I do have because because right now yeah. basically it looks like. My attacks are pretty much like I'm going melee and unarmed is how I'm just going to pummel people to death. I will disarm them with That's words. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the fucking Barry White of fucking Protectrons over here just like talking everybody down. I'll just evangelize and then hope that there's peace that comes from it yes. because they will understand why Adam is so important. Wax and brings balance to the world. I've dealt with crazed fans before. <laughs> you can handle it. <laughs> I think I'm going to end up being your biggest fan because if I'm remembering correctly, I got information <laughs> before we started the stream that apparently to the children of Adam, uh, every, uh, ladies, babies, and everybody in between, um, protectrons are like angels. Like they are like the gift that Adam has put on to on the, Earth. the Earth for us to uh, just watch in all their glory. and uh, They are the chosen uh, ones. <laughs> they they took it to bask unabashedly in the glow. I have to ask, who is this Adam that you speak of? He sounds like quite the fellow. Oh, let me tell you, we have pamphlets. <laughs> oh, gosh. Y'all are not ready. Y'all are not ready. Session, ready. session one is going to be... A hot mess, and I can't wait for it. It, 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 it. 
<laughs> in a good way, in a good way, in the best, the best of ways. In the worst of ways. Yes. Okay, okay. All right, here we go. Well, I'm going for Ill Infiltrator. I think that that's a good, that's a good one. That's a good one. How important, hey, chat, first person to pop into chat and tell me if luck is important. Do I do, do I take a four or a five? I'm just, first person that says four or five, that's what I'm going with. I'm just waiting, because I can't make up my mind. A nine. A, five. <laughs> a nine. I don't know. <laughs> I can't take... Andrew, Andrew's like nine. Andrew. <laughs> Okay, fine. I'll stick to the five. Luck is good. I would, I, I at least you can, five. You can re-roll, right, with the luck? Yes, you can re-roll one of your d20s. Instead of using action points, you can re-roll a d20. You can re-roll 3d6 damage. You can find stuff. You can change your initiative order. It's like, you, and and you're going to find out some other stuff that you can do. Like, there's some, some other stuff that you can do with, like, settlements and, and stuff. So it's going to be good. Cannot wait. Okay, I'm lucky. I think between uh, <laughs> I'm... Uh, Stud and Maggie, there's probably enough charisma and luck to go around. I think we're fine. So if you want to go skill, go for it. It just it just means that I have to take a perk to level up a thing so I can modify our very charming robot in a couple of levels. Really, that's what I started looking at. Is like <laughs> we I have to rocket to his back. Oh, now we can mom. go up. <laughs> That's, I have two goals now, because after looking through perks, I have two goals. I want to pulverize somebody in the face with either my fists or my bat. And I want to install upgrades on stud. I don't know what we're doing to stud. I don't know if stud is getting, like, a velvet, like, you know, like, new paint job, and it's going to, you know, I don't know if we're going, like, ceiling mirror. How with do you spell that, by the way? <laughs> just, just pure chrome. You cannot hide from us because your reflection can always be seen. And I think you can only have two <laughs> modifications, glow. though. Oh, oh, God. Oh, my God. All I'm saying is I just I don't know what direction we're going, but I, I want that at some point. Oh my God. Um, obviously, it will be Stud's choice, but I am just excited to see what that choice is. And mm. I want to be able to do that. She wants oh, to do this. Yes. This is going to be a wild party. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Like we need to get the explosive some uh, the explosive people some fireworks. Make sure we can get, yeah. get our Sweet. hands on a case. The chat is saying rocket boots, by the way. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. Rocket boots. yeah, flying around, Let's rocket man. Do it. We'll just upgrade you eventually to uh, to be a Liberty Prime. It'll be great. You'll just be <laughs> yeah. like... Wait, instead of oh. Ro Robo Man, it's Rocket Man. <laughs> oh, I upgrade to Rocket Man. Yes. Yes, let's yeah. do it. Wait, oh yeah, can we can we add rocket boots to to Andrew? <laughs> Andrew's like, <laughs> oh, fine, robot buddies. <laughs> oh gosh, oh my gosh. So it's uh, it's uh, what was it? Uh, Iron Man and um. Oh, um. War machine or more machine? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, speaking of equipment okay. and fun stuff. Yes. On page seventy-seven through eighty-one. Um, well, 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 those are the old ones, uh, but based on, okay, so if you go to your character origins, um, so the, so some of y'all have, you know, a uh, child of Adam, some of you chose sin. It's a people. Yes. So, <laughs> so, uh, if you go on there, you, uh, will see that you have, you're starting, uh, whichever, whichever sub origin that you chose. So, um, like... Hold on. Oh, I have it pulled up here. I'm going to roll a d20 and decide. So for Child of Adam, if you chose Missionary or Zealot, you've got your starting equipment there. Um, I'm not going to say it out loud because some people are taking notes. <laughs> some people in chat are taking notes. You can't know all of the things yet until the book comes out. But yes, you have your starting equipment there. And, um, and if it says that, that you need to roll... Uh, you need to roll on the the uh, one of the random tables. It has the page number there. Um, Protectron, same thing. Your starting equipment. It's gonna, uh, your starting equipment. It's going to tell you um, where all that is. And if it says standard plating or factory armor, if it says any of those, um, I'll show you which page number or what page number those are, so you know what your armor is, because it'll give you some def um, some armor on some of your body parts. Um, and the same thing for the child of Adam, or no, 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 the synth, um, it shows that 
synth infiltrator, it's got a few different things. Um, so like if you have, if it says any type of clothing on there, that's going to give you some defense and that is in the core book. Um, and then also any weapons or whatnot. So you uh, look GM. at that. Yes. Uh, oh, mighty overseer. So uh -huh. I rolled. Um, I have a past due library book. And oh. I would very much like to request that it be um, a book written by a one and only uh, Isaac Asimov um, that was part of a series of uh, books, actually. But oh. the first one, of course, was I, Robot. Um, and I would like that to be the book, if you do not what? mind. What? Oh my gosh, yes. I'm okay with this. I'm it was okay I do that this. or do, what was it, do Robot Stream of Electric Sheep. Uh, but I, I would like it to be iRobot. Okay. Um, because I personally love Asimov. I actually have a collection of vintage, like, old school Asimov. Um, so I would just like it to be iRobot. I think that would be excellent. It would be fun little... I feel like yeah. that would be in the Fallout world. Why not? It would be like... Well, a, it might be a twisted it. version. Maybe a little bit since robots like do. The, he wrote it in the '60s, so you know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe just a, he also a, literally great. coined the term robotics. That term did not exist before Isaac Asimov. Just throwing that oh, out there. Damn. Oh, all right. So yeah, I love that. Yeah, no, we'll make it nerd. Out. That has to be a thing. Okay, can thing. we do something though? I want, I want it to be on stream. This is the silliest thing, but I'm gonna reveal only one thing. That comes with Child of Adam. Okay, yes. And that's a roll on the random food table. Yes. On page Get 202. It. <laughs> yes. Get it. I want to roll on Oh, three. yes, do it. And then whatever it is, that is what uh, my, my, my child, not child, is going okay. to have. Okay. All right, are we doing it? It's, so you roll 2d20? I think it's just, it just says, uh, oh, it says one roll on the yeah. food table. Yeah, so, so you, you roll, you roll, a, you, well, yeah, you roll 2d20 because there's 40 options. Oh, 2d20. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, right. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's, right, it's well. up to 40 options. So what did you get? All right, what did you get? Did you do it? Let me look. Um, on... It did. So you. <laughs> All right. A twenty. So twenty nine. So twenty nine. So you get a. You get corn. It's corn. A big, a big lump with knobs. It has the juice. It has the juice. <laughs> Wait. So what? Is, what kind of corn is this? I I just can't imagine a more beautiful thing. Let's let's look and see what. This is. TikTok again. We are we are calling out to you. What, why have you forsaken I? Why have you done it? <laughs> why am I not a trending clown? <sighs> you will be now. It's gonna be. Like, <laughs> <laughs> why am I not a trending sound? That's gonna be like a, a song. Uh, <laughs> with corn. corn. With corn. 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 <laughs> why am I not a trending sound? Corn. 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 Um. Let me see. It doesn't even say how much corn. It's just corn. Corn? Maybe you just get one corn. I, uh, crafting spinning. Is it like one Consumables little piece 149. of a corn? Like one no, corn? It's, a, it's an ear of corn. Um, <laughs> which, uh, so corn. Corn, it heals 3 HP. It's This is on page 149. So uh, corn will heal you 3 HP. It does 1d6 possible of radiation damage um it's worth six caps and it's got a rarity of one rarity of one yep it has the juice it has the juice mm. yes and it's fun you might you might run into settlements that have this it's gonna be great and how, how much is the cost for this again it, it's worth six gold or six gold, six. I was like six gold. Six oh my caps. God. Six gold. That's kind of. I was thing. like, I am just rich. I'm like, no wonder you want to be a child of Adam. You're just walking around here with like corn does worthy it, of like gold pieces. This is insane. Does it tell you how many caps you start with? Um. Yes, it will. In your starting equipment, it will tell you uh, if you get anything. 
if, uh, cool. if if you get anything in your starting equipment. So, so when if you there's go not, origin, then you don't. Right. But, yes, if there's not, then he got nothing. Um, some of them, some of them do, though. Some of them, you have an extra, like, it, but not much. It'll be like 10, 10 caps or something. So you're, yeah. you'll have like 10 caps, but that's it. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. So, um, so yeah, so you'll get all your equipment. Some of the things will be clothing. Some of it, um, some of it might be armor. Um, you just need to look up in the core book what the armor is, or, uh, I don't know. We might have time, uh, sometime in the stream to look at it. We might not, uh, we'll just discuss it out, out of stream, but you do that. And on top of that, there's something fun. Oh, and I totally printed out, oh, you might not be able to see. I printed out the Winter of Adam book, so, because <laughs> I'm impatient. Yeah. Even I don't have it yet. I just have access to it. So, um, so yeah, uh, because the, where is it? These campsites. Uh, what is the bit? Is it a stem pack? Considered considerable? Or uh, it's a chem. It's a chem. Yeah. It makes no sense. I'm trying to add it to the shit. All right. Sweet. Okay. I think I feel good. Oh. Um, so, yes, I, I tried to read this earlier, and then I was like, no, that's not what I needed to read. But because the atomic winter... The Winter of Adam is so harsh, unlike any of the other um, storylines that we have put out so far. Each of you get to add to your list of starting equipment, uh, regarding regar regardless of your character origin, you get to uh, choose, let's see, two items from this list. Either beer, bourbon, a gas mask, heavy coat, hood or cowl, Molotov cocktail, pork and beans, right away, or stim pack. Stim pack and gas mask. <laughs> that was, was an a easy very time. easy decision. I um so and I can all I can put this like you could you don't have to make a decision now. I can put this in chat for y'all um later so you can decide. But uh so yeah, right away, stim pack, those are two big ones. But of course beer, bourbon, gas mask, heavy coat, hood or cowl. Uh, Molotov stud cocktail. definitely needs that that stim pack oh. um, and the gas mask especially for stud. I can't. I, I was thinking heavy coat and hood, and it's gonna be looking pretty slinky. You know, some fur on there. <laughs> you only got twenty caps in your pocket. <laughs> this is fucking awesome. Right? <laughs> I used to have it. I've got baseball grenades on hand already. Oh so. my gosh. Just looking I'll take at that. I'll take just that. looking at all you people with skin who are freezing. Like, what's wrong with you? Here, you would <laughs> right? Yes. Remember, and so yes, something also to take into consideration. We are not playing in West Texas or in the nice warm climate of Texas. This is nice. nuclear winter. This is going to yeah. be cold. There is going to be possibly some conditions some weather conditions that are not going to be pleasant that are just they're going to be bad just as bad as uh coming across an enemy so that is something to think about um but yeah. none of this says you can have a fur coat like not once in any of these options does it say congratulations you happen to go to gander mountain or some shit and you have a jacket like that's not in here i am it could be stuck in my little vault suit it could be. Heavy coat. It says heavy coat. Where? Heavy. And yeah, that's what I'm telling coat. you right now. You get to choose two. Th when you said gas mask and ah. right away, it says heavy coat. Yeah, heavy coat. Maybe it is fur lined. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is a fur coat. It just says heavy okay. coat. So, it's just, so you can describe however your coat mm -hmm. is going to look. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's I'll still... have one that looks like I'm like basically just, you know, out on the street. I don't care. Yeah, rag raggedy coat, mm. but it's, it's warm enough. For you to survive, that's great. And then a, with a cocktail, you know, the special cocktail would be great. Find some members only jacket. <laughs> and I go, or better yet, it's a Letterman. We're just gonna like, let's go home with it. I've you got a Letterman. Into this. 
<laughs> I am going I told with you. the heavy coat, and it is going to be purple. And yes. <laughs> love yes. the purple. I, I love <sighs> Stud is like is like an image already of just like this big ass protect like protectron in this purple ass jet like just bougie. Like where are the pearls? Like this. See, and you know what? Like I've already decided that his his metal plating is painted to look like overalls for the show that he was in. Oh, that's and, funny. <laughs> oh my God. So, and it's just chipping away because of all the years and rust, and no maintenance, and he's got this dope coat. Dope and coat. all he needs is a top hat. Oh, which you can get. <laughs> so, a uh, fun fact: a heavy coat gives you damage resistance, one physical one energy, and one radiation to your arms, your legs, and your torso. It uh, costs two caps. and Oh, no, it costs 20 caps. And it's got a rarity of one, and its weight is two. So, okay, yeah. okay well, hold, hold okay. on just can a we, second. Can we have more radiation involved in our... <laughs> where it's, it's thick enough for the other two, but I need all the radiation. Also... <laughs> I actually, can you say that, is it like, is it in the core book or is it like? It's in the core book. So if you look at clothing and outfits, it's on page 124 of the core book. And so it's got a, even gas mask. Gas mask is on 125. So a gas mask will give you one physical uh, damage resistance and three radiation damage resistance. <laughs> Tammy's is like, no, no, take that off. <laughs> Breathe it in. Let it, let no, it consume you. I don't, no, I don't want that. Give me a windbreaker. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I need the radiation. Um, but for those that, uh, what did, uh, let me look. The, let me look real quick. Did Sense have, okay, yeah. So like tough, like, okay. Yeah, and this so that's does there. stack over? Like um, if you, uh, no. That's my question. Yes. So you have to pick one or the other. Yeah, you either have, um, Yes, so uh, an outfit, you cannot stack something over an outfit. Um, so if you have, what if you, can you stack an outfit over clothing? So clothing, I believe clothing was fine. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, I believe outfits generally, oh yeah, so outfits generally grant more protection or larger bonuses at the cost of being unable to combine them with armor. So if you have an outfit, you cannot put armor over it, but if you have clothing, um, armor, you, you can. can. Yes, because clothing is lighter, but the but outfits, so no. So the coat is okay to have over, like, uh, the clothing. Yeah. Like, for example, I can wear yeah. a coat over my, my jumpsuit. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Wait, jumpsuit. Well, jumpsuit, would since this, it's clothing, yes. Would this coat work with uh, studs heavy plating? That is interesting. Does it say <laughs> that you cannot wear clothing? It doesn't say that you cannot wear clothing, does it? Um, I don't think that it says that you can't wear clothing. Wait, uh, from what I read. I know Slim in. I would think, yeah, because I think, I think that plating, I think that that, counts as armor yeah um i would i would assume because you're i definitely i definitely assume so too yeah because that's just like armor um so your standard plating gives you two physical resistance um two physical resistance to everything to your whole body and oh unless you did something else unless you I did, did i did the, i did the heavy plating Oh, heavy plating. Heavy I, plating. I'm, uh, utility. Okay. Uh, heavy plating. Uh, I have a question when you are ready, my, my uh, fabulous GM. Yes. Um. Heavy coat. Can that be? Can that be worn with leather armor, or does leather armor? Uh, yeah, out, since a heavy coat is an outfit, it cannot be worn with uh, with armor. Sick. Uh, I yeah, know. Who knows that one? All right, I'm coatless now. Damn it. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, you're not sorry. It's totally okay though. Uh. Now instead of that, I'm taking a hood. 
<laughs> Gotta protect the head, man. Protect the head. Where is... I have a hat on. Right? <laughs> Undo shit. Oh, here we are. <laughs> All right, where's the hood on here? I gotta change I'm that. still oh, taking factory. a stim pack and a heavy coat then. Okay. Okay. That's just happening. Did you say factory armor? Uh, mm -hmm. Leather. Uh, uh, nigh. That's uh, the. Oh, so sorry. No, you're fine. No, you're fine. It is. Do, 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 do. Because I was like, it's not heavy. It says. Back, yeah, so factory, back okay, because I was like, there's yeah. not a... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so confused. Um, body and arms. Okay, then you get, yeah, no, you get plus one to physical and plus one to energy all over. Okay. So plus one to physical and plus one to um, energy. And, yes. and is that on top Eleven. of my... my t you said I get two with just normal, right? Um, Yours is... Where did I find it? Uh, okay. I'm so sorry. Hazard. No, no, once per scene, you may reroll all tests. You're immune to disease and radiation. You're immune to disease and radiation poison, which. Oh, that's it right there. That's yeah. It. So that's all. Yeah. So you're just immune to. So on the sheet, the radiation, you're immune to radiation. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you said leather armor. Were you looking for this, for that? Uh, Andrew? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, armor. Okay. And I believe it's on. Here we go. Okay. That's not it. That's not it. Okay. Um, is it regular leather? I believe so. I think it's just a chest piece. Okay. Okay. I can carry 225 pounds of junk, y'all. I am your pack mule. I'm your huckleberry, guys. I'll carry whatever you need me to. <laughs> that is, that is <laughs> your huckleberry. Okay, so leather armor. Each piece of leather armor can accept um, two mods, one of which is material, the other one of which is an upgrade. Um, for mods applied to the torso armor, double the weight and cost. All leather armor material mods are installed with the repair skill. So, um, so yeah, you just have to decide if you want, let's see, more... Let's see what kind of leather you want. I thought it was just basic. I thought you get one to physical and one to energy. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, no, it's one to physical, two to energy. I was looking at the wrong place. Uh, page 130. So leather, chest piece, one physical, two energy. I was getting ahead of myself. I was like, that's not, that doesn't sound right. Nightbot, I am Lydia. What? <laughs> yes, someone said uh, the Protectron is pro uh, programmed to carry their burdens. And oh I, said, I am Lydia from Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on your yeah, so on your character sheet, um, so you will see that there's HP. You see the HP on each of the like the head, the right arm, left arm. The HP does not have anything to do with your armor. HP only has to deal with power armor. So. Ignore any HP on any of your body parts. That's only HP for power armor. Right now, you're, you're only looking for your head physical uh, damage resistance, uh, energy damage resistance, radiation damage resistance. Just don't look at the HP part. Um, so yeah, for your head, your arms, your torso, and your legs. Uh, so the HP should be zero for all of you because uh, none of y'all are wearing power armor. Um, did y'all yes. have any... Yes, yet. <laughs> um, did y'all have any questions about that equipment? Yet? No. No? We're pretty good? I think I'm good. Yeah. Just making sure I get yeah. it all in place. Yeah, I know, I know. It's yeah. a lot. <laughs> I just, now, I mean, 
the coat thing. Can I just tie that around my waist and call it Gucci? No effect. <sighs> Pure aesthetic. You can have it. I will say that you can have it, but you can't take the benefit from it. It's too tight. It doesn't fit yeah. around your <laughs> armor frame. <laughs> yeah. So if you like needed to let somebody <laughs> borrow it, that's cool if you ever wanted yeah. to. But yeah, you well, yourself you cannot wear sure it. Stud would. Stud, yeah. Stud's an endearing human robot. Now I'm having trouble trying to find the <laughs> the info for the gamma. I oh. got a gamma gun, and oh. I don't. I can't find that. I find the mods, but not the information for that particular. Okay, got it. Got I got never it. had. An energy weapon before. And can you blast yourself in the face with a gamma gun to get the radiation bonus? Oh, oh yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> just bam in the face. Just woo. I'm feeling a little Feel down, guys. Gotta get a pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's this very is, dark. We went this, in a dark place. Okay. This is gonna go. <laughs> page 101. At the oh, bottom of page 101 in the core book. It does 3D, it's an energy weapon. It does 3D6 worth of damage. Uh, damage effects is piercing one and stun. Uh, damage type is radiation. Fire rate of one, medium range. It has quality of blast and an accurate weight of three. Cost of 156. Yeah. yeah I, I, that was, I was Rarely looking at the, I think, the mod section, not the actual. Okay. It, it, it has a rarity of five. Wow. It's super rare. No one's getting this gun, though. Because yep. it's that's what, gun. Okay, that's what I said, and I never got my gun back. Well, okay, that was it's been over a year, and I never got my gun. gun no, I've away. never gotten my gun you back. You gave it away. I, I don't just, see my character doing that. I just needed to bring that up one more time. <laughs> you will never like. I will never let this go. Yeah, never, ever. Never. I will get my damn gun back eventually, someday. It's like, and you're, we're so far away from where we were in the other campaign. You can't get it here. Forget I think I, it. by this date, it's like, correct me if I'm wrong, Evel, but by this day and age, like, Peggy Sue's dead as hell, right? Like, <laughs> like by this point in history, like, Peggy Sue is like dirt, correct? Dirt. Dirt. Yeah, dirt. April, like, right? Like, but like. How like Peggy Sue is like long dead by this point in time, right? Oh yeah, yeah. This takes place between um, New Vegas and Fallout Four. So and the timeline between, yeah. you. and that's like two hundred year. It's we good did, to see that everything we like did mattered. At least a hundred years after our campaign, our last one. Yeah, everything yeah. we did totally mattered. The world is in a better place. <laughs> oh, unless you like turned ghoulish. Oh, no, Peggy totally wanted to die eventually. Like, that way, Sugar can go back to Sugar Mama. But, oh, you oh. know, like, Peggy just had her to... Also, like, remember, Peggy wants to be with her family at the end of the day. So, yes. like, eventually, rest time was a, was a thing. But her lineage has been carried on, and one of her distant relatives was a one and only Lafayette Daytona. So... <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Okay, uh, did anybody have any other questions about uh, your equipment so far? I think, because I just kind of went through that, like, area through there, like, that pay, like, because it goes, if you have tag skills, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So that's, I just went through that. Okay. And I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah, so you got that equipment, so the equipment that it came with your origin. Yeah. Now we're going to go to uh, your tag skill equipment. So on page 81 of the core book, you get even more items based on your tag skills to make you even more unique. So say that you, ta you took a tag skill um, in athletics. You also get some casual clothing and a buff out. Or maybe you took a tag skill in repair. You get a multi-tool. Um, so yeah, you get extra stuff. Um, yeah. I think, like, I'm fine. I think I'm getting it. Yeah. So there's, like, a lot of extra it. stuff. Like, if you took um, a tag skill. So, yeah, if, so all of you have three tag skills. So you should have, on page 81, you should have three um, three different things that you take. So, like, if you took. I can get the baseball grenade. Mm-hmm. Big guns, you get four plus 2d6 extra shots of flamer fuel. All kinds of stuff. Oh my 
gosh. Like, that's so much stuff right now. Wait, mm -hmm. I got a formal hat and formal clothing as well? Oh, that's cool. I know. Yeah, like there's the tag skills give you extra fun stuff. I love oh, it. Yeah. I also, yeah, I totally took small guns as a tag skill. <laughs> oh, oh my God, I have so much ammo. Jesus that's, Christ. That's good. That's good. That's good. Because if you have fire, like a higher fire rate, then you can do more damage. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Yeah. yeah, we're going to roll all the six points. Ooh, that sounded really cool. That's all extra the dice. Ammo. Gosh. Nice. Okay, yeah, because I, um, there was a, uh, a designated roll on page 200 for ammunition that I made. So I made, I decided to do that roll and roll 20, and, roll 20, uh -huh. and it gave me more ammo. Dang. Roll the bullets, it's awesome. That's good, that's good, that's good. So nobody okay. better double cross you. <laughs> <laughs> you will pay. Get capped. Yes. I'll just deck somebody at this point. <laughs> or hit them with my bat. Or blow them up with a grenade. Um, does anybody have any questions about um, any of that? Your items from that? Um, if anybody, uh... wait, I get <laughs> yes, yes, yes. For speech. I get a formal hat and formal clothing. <laughs> yes, and it actually does something. I believe. I think. I think there's like. So a, a child of Adam, so I'm really going to be oh. a full-on Jehovah's Witness just, at this point. Like, I, this is like oh. It's a white button-up with like the little pocket not, not, protector, not. Hello. backpack. Wow. Okay, at this point, so um, Stud also, because speech, yeah, naturally, has a top hat now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I'm All starting right. to like... Everybody I feel like has we're a really good evangelical me. team right here. Like, <laughs> we are. We're going to be teaching the good. Oh, teacher, no. And you're going to help me because your charisma is also very high. See, this is great. We can help each other out. Like, just in, fantastic. We in the middle of up. your sermons. Oh, be Like, now, let's take a quick, refreshing break of Nuka Cola. Mm. Mm. Wait, wait. Taste we both have one. Yeah, it has some radiation and stuff, but it's fine. Taste the rad. Don't resist it. You want to consume it. It makes you whole. And only poisons you a little. I feel like oh, I need to no. I need to get everybody what it like that's, so since we both like have one of these now, is... I need to get a bottle for all y'all. Like that's that that yeah. should be my stream <laughs> gift to you guys. Like get y'all a bottle of all, a Nuka Cola bottle. So yeah. we can all drink together on screen. If they're they're the quenchiest, they're the radiant. <laughs> I just the radius. I just oh intend for sport to just be in the background every time you're trying to talk to somebody ruining that conversation by going, oh, yeah, you don't know the, yeah, it's like this thing. And they're going to go. I get 2D20 additional caps on top of that. Oh, my gosh. Barter? Yeah, barter. Mm -hmm. yeah. If, if any of you had any weird, like, 24. tools or utility items based off of your tag skills, um, like one of them's a multi-tool. So on page 181, like multi-tool does, uh, it reduces the difficulty of repair tests by one. Or maybe you got a pit boy, which there's a description for pit boy or a radio or a torch or a first aid kit. So, or a doctor's bag. So um, on page 181, it has all those miscellany weird items that you might get from tag skills and stuff like that. Four plus two. D6 bobby pins. <laughs> Don't lock your doors because we're going to be picking them forever. <laughs> we are sitting good. at 11 bobby pins. That's good. Awesome. Oh, that's, yeah, that's really good. Um, okay, so any questions on uh, the tag skill items or anything like that? No? I have a question. Yes. But it's more of... So specialty wise, like looking at our party because I am oh, taking no. notes so that I remember. Yes. Um, where where are we? What are we good at? Because this I'm trying to know. Like for my notes. Like, I, I we've got Splody McTalk face. Is that what I'm getting out of the Child of Adam? Is like we can both <laughs> talk your pants off and blow them up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we what I like to say is we're anointing them with you know just with with, with, the glow. with all the energy and all of the glow you're we're baptizing them 
Okay. <laughs> the glow up. Okay, we're, we're just, you know, imagine a spa, but we just like oh my God. toss the water, or in this case, <laughs> the, the radiation. The big boom boom the over boom in your direction. Yeah. It engulfs you <sighs> in flames. And then when the flames go away, you're, you're again, you're whole again. <laughs> you're fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> The uh, holy flame. There we go. Back to okay. the holy flame. Oh, oh my God. Gamma ray radiation. There I, we go. I can dig it. At night, Nywal, what are, where are we? I know we're charming. Uh, but... he, well, honestly, he is. I, I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing stud like a real uh, Hollywood, like snob. One hundred percent. Oh yeah. Um, doesn't like. You know, red skittles, all that kind of stuff. But he is—he's—he's <laughs> he's the face, essentially. He will be the face, and pick locks apparently. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, he picks locks all the time because I mean, you—you you know how many times they kept him locked up inside the warehouse and he refused to stay locked up. Oh my god. He liked—he I... liked to go on all night benders, drinking with all the other celebrities of Hollywood. As one does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, and what about Rob? What about mm-hmm. Rob? What, do you, Rob? what are we good at? We shoot things. We shoot yes. things. Yes. I'm, 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 it hurts Shooting. me to hear that just because I'm a little jealous, but it's going to be okay, Taryn. I didn't say they're going to be very well. I just thought I shoot things. And I hit things, too. Sometimes Peggy didn't always hit her target. Or sometimes she hits mannequins. Sometimes when Taryn. When I'm real drunk, uh, when, when Peggy and their friends were very drunk, they, they killed the shit out of that mannequin. It was a big threat to the party, and then they passed out drunk underneath the table. If you're ever curious about what we're talking about, you can go over to Don't the Initiative Order on YouTube and see the campaign that uh, some of us played in previously and see some of these characters in action. It was fun times. Uh, yeah. So... You're not the edgiest of synths. You're just a beat them up, smash them up. Yep. Okay. And I, I am, as stated, the gun synth. I like. I really like that. Super. Like. I. I really like that. That phrase. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to have an I idea. Um, <laughs> not get not. I'm just, not even. I was thinking about this concept of so. Just. I mean. So let's, let's talk about. Robots, right? <laughs> robots, robots, man. Robots. The Gen 3 sense is is the most high technological advancement that there's ever been. And he is killing machine trying to be human. I am I robot. Human. It's I robot. And, I, and it's Tootsie. so I I love it so much because then like I, I'm excited about the conversations that Stud and him are gonna have. And assuming that Stud ever finds out that he's a sin, you know? <laughs> like, this is true. Like, it's just going to be like, your cold attitude towards many things makes me like you more. <laughs> I'm just here to learn. My name is Rob. <laughs> I am Stud. <laughs> I am Bruce. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm an unwitting jock that can fix robots. That's perfect. That's yeah. I feel like go. it's well rounded. We don't have a smashy smashy person per se, but we have a boomy that. person. We got boomy person, but no smashy. It's okay. I have a little bit of smash smashy smashy. I I'm I'm dealing Yeah, you got the baseball bat. I'm I'm handing out let's see here. When I when I smack with my baseball bat, I'm handing out at least five dice That's worth of bad. smack smack. For level one, that's good. So we got, we do have Smashy. You're, you're the Smashy this time. <laughs> Perfect. I can handle that, I guess. It just feels so weird because I'm usually the Snipey. <laughs> oh, Snipey. It's okay. <sighs> okay. Um, all right. So after getting all your equipment, uh, the final step is determining your damage resistance. So um, all of your damage resistant stats are usually zero unless you are wearing armor or have damage resistant from your origin feature, which I kind of talked about before. <laughs> so if you got armor plating or if you have resistance to um, radiation because you're a child of Adam or because or you're um, 
immune to radiation because you're a synth uh, or something like that, or you take, you know, or you're wearing some armor that gives you physical um, energy or radiation damage resistance. Um, yeah, that's where you would put all that in your uh, on your little vault boy uh, now. So for your head, your left arm, your right arm, your torso, your left leg, and your right leg, because we use vats in this game with our little D20 die. We do have a hit, uh, a roll to hit die. Um, yeah. So we hit locations on this on this game. So so yeah, you would just input all that. And then oh, yeah. that's creating your character. And then I have a, what is this, a hazard detection oh. or sensor array. So I could choose between those two. I, I forgot to bring that up. Yeah. Those would be, let's see, what page is it? Oh my gosh, so nice. We have the formal hats, right? Yeah, we do. So wearing but all three of you guys do. Well, okay, all th all of us. Yeah. Wearing the formal hat allows you to reroll one single d20 on a charisma-based skill test that you make each scene, as it helps you make a first good impression. Tip that hat. <laughs> so we're not only classy, but you know. Hold on, let me try it from this angle. Hey. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> Did I just become a character from Westworld or something like that with that formal hat? Holy crap. <gasps> oh my gosh, it. what? We gotta find the maze. That's the only way. Wait, do you want my bold, bowler hat? <laughs> uh, this might have to happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this is gonna, uh, this is crazy. And sports just gonna be like, I know. Everyone's wearing hats. <laughs> Bart's just gonna be like, we gotta get, we gotta get you a hat. That's that's the goal. Someone oh needs to tell them how to live. So... <laughs> okay, you're saying. Sports is gonna be confused as a whole at this point. Okay, we've got a child of Adam and two robots. Sport don't know what's going on. We've been hanging out in the vault for a while. Like we're just we're we're gonna be like. There's somebody trying to evangelize everybody. Snooty robot talking about benders. Bob. Rob. Oh my gosh. Rob Bob. Rob Bob. Rob Bob. Rob Bob. Rob Bob. Rob Bob. That's going to be a I... thing. You're going to call me Bob. And I'm gonna... Bob. Oh, I was, Rob. I have... My name is Rob. Robbie Bobby. Rob Bobino. <laughs> the Robster. Uh, Making gunshots. <laughs> Killing villains. You remind me of like Averman from like the Mighty Ducks. That's that's the vibe I'm getting right now. Where is this? We, we have a high chance that we could bring peace in these trying times with class. <laughs> Don't. And charisma. Oh okay. Okay, Nye. It's gonna be bad. I I found it. It's radiation. <laughs> okay, Nye, you radiation. are. Oh God. You are looking for page 185. 185. Those are yeah, your robot modules. It's oh, it was in a weird place. Like this is the one I could never remember which page it was on. So yeah, page 185. Um, 185 in which so you get the hazard detection mod or sensory array. Hazard detection reduces oh, so hazard detection reduces the difficulty of survival tests to detect and disable traps. Everybody knows I like to put landmines in their game. Yes, um, you do. Disable traps and similar hazards by one. So it does that. Or, but this one we're following a, 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 the, bot, the book module. So mm, that's good. If they're there, they're there. Or the sensory array. Uh, Reroll 1d20 on all perception tests. May attempt perception tests to detect things which cannot normally be detected by the naked eye, such as radiation. So yeah, you get to pick one of those two. That is irradiated. Dive. <laughs> Everyone just dive. Okay. Oh gosh. Okay. Wait a second. Hmm. Yes. A walking cane is a weapon. Oh, I'm gonna. Pop. So that that's you are turning into. Uh, What's his name? But a robot. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, or Mr. Peanut. That's irradiated. Oh my gosh. Top of the morning to you. Have you heard of 
children. Let me tell you, children. <laughs> it's turned into a tie, top hat, and tail situation, and I love it. Beautiful. <laughs> oh goodness. I'm ready to smash stuff up, and y'all are trying to play charisma characters for like the first time ever. <laughs> Well, I feel like we're just dressed for the part. I don't think, you know, like. Hey, it's, you know, this life chose us. We yeah, this life it. chose us. You know, you, you choose one tag skill, and next thing you know, you're at the Ritz. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, so just a few extra little, let me see. Okay. A few extra little, um, uh, tips and whatnot, and um, a few like just useful tips. So TN, if you ever see TN like on your character sheet, TN means target number. So that's going to be um, on your character sheet when you add your weapons and stuff like that. Um, you have to uh, add those in manually, but when you add in your weapons, uh, your TN is your target number. So for instance, if you were using um, uh, like we'll say Terran's baseball bat. Uh, that's going to be your, where is it? Melee plus, it's going to be a melee weapon plus your strength. So whatever your target number for your skill, your target number under melee weapons, plus, even if it's a zero, uh, plus your strength. And then you, you roll 2d20 and you want at or below that number. Um, Two successes, one of which is attack skill, so that's three of them. Yes, and if you ever, yeah, so I will explain all that during gameplay. That's what target number means. It means you're, uh, I'll tell you to add this skill plus this skill. Give me your number, and then I'm going to tell you to roll 2d20, and then you tell me if you, you got at or below that number. Uh, let's see, some other useful things. Melee weapon, target number, like I just said, target number is strength plus melee. Um... Let's see, damage effects from weapons uh, and what they can do can be found on page 30. So, so if you're curious about like, what does vicious do? What does um, piercing do? What does spread do? Those, because several of your weapons do have weapon qualities, those will be, or damage types um, and damage effects. Those are on page 30. So uh, when I tell you to roll damage, you'll roll d6s. So d20, d20s are for your, your ability tests, and then d6s are for your damage, um, your, your damage basically most of the time. Um, so when you, uh, if I ask you to roll d6s, and at any time you roll a five or a six, or the little vault boy face if you're using the, uh, our dice, then uh, that automatically means that uh, one, of your your, one of your damage effects takes place. So, uh, so just um, for clarification, like if you roll a one, it does one damage. If you roll a two, it does two damage. If you roll a three or a four, zero damage. If you roll a five or a six, it's one damage plus any weapon effects that you have. Um, like I said, like vicious or spread or piercing. So, and uh, most of those do not stack unless it's piercing. Piercing's the only one I believe that stacks. So, yeah. Um, but all of this, uh, don't be worried about if, I mean, this is a lot to remember. I've, all, I've, got, I've got most of it remembered for you. I've got my whole little handy dandy notebook here that I took all my notes in a long, long time ago. And I'm always refreshing my, I'm always refreshing and going back through here and um, trying to remember stuff um, and study stuff that uh, I forget sometimes. So we're going to have fun. Don't worry about the rules because I got you. I just want you all to worry about having fun, uh, creating your character, and, um, and yeah, just, uh, just enjoying yourselves and, and building this uh, wonderful story with me. So, yeah. yeah. I'm ready um, to play sport and just be lost. That's uh, so what's yeah. really going to happen. <laughs> and not even because, honestly, sport is not dim. Sport is like bad at talking to people sport is definitively adhd in a package but like sport is gonna be lost because of this party St stud will take you under his wing and show you how to live like a true american <laughs> 
under extreme wealth and fashion. And you're going to say hotels. fashionism. And radiation. Yes. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. He does a lot of things. He's not that. He's he pretty chill. He just... He just super capitalist. That's, That's okay. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, shit. oh boy. That's fine. That's fine. I, I like I'm this lad. This. I like this lad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining us for session zero of uh, Fallout, the role playing game, Winter of Adam. Uh, the book does drop on the 11th. So be watching for that. It will be coming out. So you can grab this and you can play along with us uh, in this new adventure uh, that's, that takes place uh, basically right in the area of, um, of Diamond City uh, in the timeline period between uh, Fallout 4 and New, Ve new Vegas and Fallout 4. So yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of chaos, and uh, we hope to see you there. And we hope you enjoy the session zero and that it helped you uh, create a character sheet and um, give you some inspiration on how to uh, get a game set up. So uh, before we leave, we will once again, just tell everybody um, about yourselves and where they can find you. My name is April Hill. You can find me at stiletto underscore assassin on Instagram, stiletto DM on Twitter, and of course the community manager for, for Modifius Entertainment. So, uh, yeah, join our Discord and hang out with me and, and hang out with other like-minded uh, people who love playing 2D20 and other games that we create. Uh, let's go in reverse. Val Rook, Taryn. Oh. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Val. Well, Taryn, also known as Val Rook across the socials, generally creative human, TTRPG player, and GM. I specialize in horror. I'm also an eldritch entity, but I'm also a dice maker under the moniker of Umbral Oculus Dice. That is UO underscore dice on the Instagram. If you don't believe me, check out my other streams and things. You can catch me occasionally on the Red Hair Inn. Um, actually, tomorrow, after you can catch me at the Red Hair Inn. Um, random Tuesdays there. Uh, you can catch me over on the Initial Order if you want to go watch Dune. Uh, we did a mini series of Dune over on the Initial Order, and of course, Cult Divinity lost my beautiful, beautiful baby, where I'd love to torment people, and I made a 36-year-old man jump in his seat by a description. So if you want to go watch some horror, uh, but yeah, you can catch me at Val Rook and follow me there, and all the stuff gets posted. So let's let's do it. All right. Yes. Yeah. So many streams. So many fun things in there. The Dune campaign was. Phenomenal! It was a nice little mini series using the, uh, I believe, use the campaign experience box. Yeah. Yes. Was, yes. So if you're curious yes, about how to run that, to yes. If you're curious about how to run that, um, go check that out and um, follow along. So. Yeah. Uh, Nywall. Uh, I am Nywall on everything YouTube, TikTok. I'm so sorry. You know what? I, I forgive y'all. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, you name it. Uh, keep an eye out for YouTube tomorrow because I'm releasing all my red ball stuff. Ooh, ooh. Um, and oh, and the Capcast. Shout out to the Capcast. It's a gaming culture podcast where we just sit there nice. and talk about games and their, their impact on culture. So nice. That's that's very cool. Um, yeah. So lots lots of projects going on. Like everybody's so busy and has really cool things. I love it. Uh, Utaime. Hello everyone, I'm Utahime. You can find me on the social medias at U-T-A-H-I-M-E. Utahime Cosplay pretty much everywhere, um, except on Twitter, if you're still on Twitter, at Brianna DePasto on there. Uh, as the name suggests, I am a cosplayer. I'm also a host, and I'm up to lots of tabletop shenanigans on a weekly basis, including the fact that I'm a community manager over at the Initiative Order, an amazing community of folks. Uh, you can learn how to play different games. Uh, we have community games running every month. Um, and also, too, if you want to try to be on streams kind of similar to this one, uh, we also have those different casting calls and things going on all the time. So uh, be sure to check us out over there. Um, I am also, too, going to be found this week over at um, Open Circuit Studios for Leverage Los Angeles. If anyone's familiar with the TV show Leverage, uh, Cortex uh, created a using their Cortex Prime system. There is a game yes. that's based off of that uh, show. Uh, it is a lot of fun. I get to play their resident thief hacker. And yeah, we get up to crazy shenanigans and it's absolute chaos. And I'm pretty sure that this group <laughs> is going to also be chaos. So uh, just more fun to be had. Uh, but yes, that's pretty much me. Yeah. Passing it along. Yes. And Andrew. Well, hello there. 
<laughs> Thanks for joining in. I'm Andrew J. Landy here. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Andrew J. Landy. Sometimes doing this stupid voice, sometimes just talking to my regular voice. Totally fine. Uh, what's going on? Uh, yeah, a host, voice actor, actor. Again, I was Dante Mendoza and Port Saga. Check it out if you want something to listen to through your daily commute or through your work. It's awesome. You'll love the characters there. Uh, two seasons, find it wherever you get your podcasts. Apple, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Search Port Saga or Vampire the Masquerade Port Saga. You will love it. Uh, beyond that, again, super thanks to everybody here hanging out. Uh, again, super excited to learn more and play this uh, weird Gen 3 synth, Rob E. Synth, as I saw again in the chat. There is more to be revealed, but again, you'll have to be, you'll have to be here for that session one. Uh, beyond that, again, thanks to everybody, and I hope you treat yourself to something kind today. Yes, yes, and thank you all again uh, for joining us for session zero. Uh, join us. Whoa, why did my okay? Uh, join us for session zero next week, uh, same time, same place. Or session zero, session one, same time again next week, and tune in tomorrow for uh, session two of Star Trek Adventures: Shackleton Expanse here on the Modifius Twitch channel. We are going to raid our friends at Cryptic Studios who are playing Star Trek Adventures with the amazing GM, Aliza Pearl. So stick, uh, stick around and uh, show them some love. We'll see y'all next time. Yeah. Bye.